it's time to dish with D. That's me. Thank you for clicking on this video and making yourself a priority. I am Denise. Today is Saturday, and Saturday is weekly weigh-in and WW meeting topic du jour. Yes, my lovelies, I am still bringing you the Weight Watchers meeting topic. Why? Because I have it, and you'd want to hear it, so D does for you. So... I don't attend meetings currently. I'm in the process of finding a closer meeting. Um, I don't know if I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to try. I there's just to go to the one that I was going to. It has moved three miles further, and honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not willing to drive 40 minutes each way. I know that may sound for somebody to be like, oh, I'd kill to drive 40 minutes, D. I get that, but I'm just not that at that point of my journey that that's the case for me. I'm at, yeah, lose a few pounds, stay on maintenance, enjoy the company of people. Yeah, uh, I there is one they may be going to that's a little bit closer, but I'm working on that one. So at, at right now, we are not attending meetings. I'm going to start attending some virtual meetings. And in my Facebook group, if you're not a part of that, you should. This is Slim. Welcome, Slim. How you doing? Um, I posed the question, put down your favorite virtual coaches and... They did. So here's the fun thing. Let's check out who they suggested and attend a couple virtual meetings. Now, I know a lot of you don't like virtual, yet you love me and I love that. But you just don't know. Maybe you haven't met the right virtual coach yet. So I'm going to get that list. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to check out what the times are. And I'm going to attend several and see which one I click with and see maybe that's the way to go for me now. Because honestly, like I said, it's just, it's just, it's too much of a, it's just, it's 40, 40. That's 80 minutes of car time that I can't sit through at the moment with this back. If you didn't know, I'm having hip issues. I have a doctor's appointment. I have an x-ray on Monday and I have a doctor's appointment the following Monday for a hip specialist. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's been daunting the last couple of days. I will tell you that, but I thank you all for your messages and your prayers and, and your concern. And it always warms my heart that you guys you take time to message me and you know but it doesn't surprise you because we're friends you know and that's what friends do friends check on you don't they they do if they're your real friend they do they check on you um and that's you know you guys you know we've never met and we may never meet we're still friends and i love that and we have a fantastic community here and if this is your weight loss meeting i take that burden on high-heartedly and i i am Ple uh, it's my pleasure to do it for you and I when you guys say that it's like what oh my god it's it's it's, it's an honor when you people tell me I'm your meeting I'm your coach I love that um it's something I've wanted to do I tried to do it with WW but alas they didn't want me but yes it is a weight loss community again I'm not a professional I'm not an expert I'm a girl who's been on a journey and I've taken a few classes you know, I, I, don't, I don't claim to know everything. I just tell you what works for me, what I find that I do. And if that resonates with you, fantastic. I have a few of you that have mentioned that because I talk about macros that you're into tracking them. And that's a good thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with tracking macros. And like I say this a lot. And if you are out there say oh, I'm tracking calories, please. It's just if you're tracking those calories, you could be tracking macros because if you have an app that does that, it should be able to do both. And those are the things you need to look for. Calories tell you zip. Really, nutritionally, they tell you nothing. You need to know what the fat is. You need to know what the carbohydrates are, the sugars, the proteins, the fiber. It's just a good, it makes better choices. Like, and with Weight Watchers and their point system, I kind of get why they come up with a point because if it has the better things, it's lower point. If it doesn't have the better things, it's higher in point. So you can complain all you want that points are X because of this of this food. Because honestly, I don't care if it's a whole food or not. It's not good for you. Just because it's a whole food doesn't make it also a great option. It's a great option in the sense that it's easier maybe for your body to break down because it's natural, but not necessarily the best option. But you need to find what those options fit your lifestyle. Not my lifestyle, your lifestyle. So what works for you might not work for me, and what works for me not work for, might not work for you. So you have to find your journey. And don't do something because I tell you to. Don't say, oh my God, D said this. I mean, well, the macros you should. But I mean, don't eat the foods I eat because I eat them. If that is something that is tempting you, then you absolutely should try it. Um, 
you know, but don't do something because somebody says this is what works for them. So you should do it. I try not to be that way. I hope I'm not. I'm just, I try me. I incorporate everything. There's nothing off limits in my world. Um, I always say moderation is the key. And I learned that on this journey that you could have a little bit of something and a little bit of something and it's not bad. No food is inherently bad. You know, you could, you hear people talk about that all the time. That's their way of coping with why they don't want to eat it. People, we all have our way of coping with things. I try to keep an open mind with everything and realize that, yeah, this journey is in here. It is. If you didn't know that, let me enlighten you. Your journey is mental. 90% mental, 10% of what you eat. Pretty, pretty much. Because if you think something is negative, it's going to negatively affect you. But let's get to my weigh-in because I've chatted on for five minutes. Weigh-in, how did you do this week? You know, I had a huge gain last week. I think it was 4.2. I was a little bit shocked, you know, and did I get weighed the next, a lot of people said to me, oh, it's probably water, you should get weighed tomorrow, and I thought about it, and I thought to myself, for me, weighing every day doesn't work. Again, something that I learned on my journey is that's for, you know, not for me. Uh, so I just, I really will tell you that normally on a Saturday, weigh-in day, I'm a little bit looser, I have extra points, I have weeklies and stuff like that, so maybe... I may be a little bit more loosey-goosey with my tracking and, and my food. But last Saturday, I was not. I said, no, you're not going to do that. I mean, we might. I'm trying to think what I ate for dinner last Saturday. Did we go out? I don't even remember last Saturday. That's pretty sad. I don't remember last Saturday. Um, I don't know what we ate. <laughs> That's sad. I don't remember what I I do remember I, I ate regular. I you know, I don't sit there and over-exercise. Like, oh my God, I need to walk more because I gained four pounds. Or I need to eat less because I gained four pounds. I continued my journey and the scale reflected that. I was down four pounds. Shocking. I was, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, well, as shocked as I was that I was up for, I'm equally as shocked that I was down for. So I was happy with that. I was like, again, I had to get on the scale twice because I wasn't sure that was where my going. Are you all right? You're right. Wow. Yeah. So down four pounds. Did, wasn't down 4.2 though. So I'm still up 0.2. But you know what? That's a scratch for me. It's a win. You have to look at the big picture. Not the fact that you gained 0.2, but you only lost four. So there's 0.2 you didn't lose. You don't look at that picture. You look at the fact that you were down four pounds. And let's move on from that. Right? That's a win. That's a huge win. At my, at my weight, remember, I am not at my heaviest. I'm not even at my middlest. I'm at round, I have 10 pounds that I need to lose. The fact that I lose four in one week, I was a bit shocked. I mean, maybe it was water. I don't know. Um, but I don't lose four pounds in a week. It's just like, so I was a bit shocked because, yeah, I was hoping for a pound. I was going to be like kicking my heels up. I lost a pound. Four pounds is a lot to wait to lose. If I, and I ate really well. I mean, you'll see in Tuesday's video what I ate this week. I didn't change anything. Um, I ate my normal three meals a day with snacks. I had a couple of nut butter, rice cakes. I had, um, oh, I made it a recipe. What do you see on meal prep tomorrow? It's a riff on Hungry Girls, but I added pasta because it needed to be, a, you know, if it's an entree, it needs to have a little bit of sustenance. So we did, I finished that. And I even ate last night. It's funny. I ate a lot yesterday. I was like, I don't normally eat, you know, like I it was picking all day yesterday. And I don't normally pick on the day before weigh-in. Oh, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because we're stuck in the rain, but I was picking, 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 picking. But I still lost four pounds. So it's all good in the hood. You know, I'm extremely excited for and happy to see what happens next week. So let's get to the topic because it's been nine minutes and I haven't talked about the topic already. I thank you. If you're still here, thank you. <laughs> How to get excited again about your go-to foods. I love to get excited about my go-to foods. I am excited about my food. And you see it and I get told that all the time. Do you get so excited? And that's what I want for you. The excitement that I get is because it's good food and it's food that I want to eat not food that I think I have to eat and there's the difference I want it so when you want something you're like oh, I get excited all right okay Beth Jane picture the foods you're always reaching for fresh fruit and yogurt 
not always reaching for fresh fruit and yogurt but let's move on juicy roast chicken crunchy popcorn dig into why and how they earned your mvp statuses to unlock the full potential and reinvigorating your journey now i would be like my go-to reaching for foods would not be fresh fruit and yogurt well i will say yogurt but not always as a primary, like in a progurt bowl. I look forward to those progurt bowls. And that is just yogurt mixed with protein powder and added fruit on top. So that is basically the fruit and yogurt in a progurt bowl. Again, adding something into that, that's going to make a huge dent in your nutrients and really be filling and delicious. It almost feels like dessert when I eat it. Juicy roast chicken. Roast chicken is fantastic when it's roasted correctly. And I'm a person who roasts when I roast my chicken breast, if I get them split with the skin on. I do. I don't eat the skin, but I pull the skin off. It just tastes better. And it's more, it's like a rotisserie chicken. So if you're out there eating rotisserie chicken, roast your chicken with the skin on. It's okay. It's not going to kill you. I mean, did we gain weight because we left our skin roasting on our chicken? No. <laughs> Try this. Oh, I love when she tries this. One, think about the new foods you started eating on Weight Watchers. Old favorites reimagined with a healthier spin and once a minor player promoting to the starring roles in all counts. And I just kind of just said that for you. How did I get yogurt to be fantastic? Is putting protein powder in it and fresh fruit on top. Strawberries, blueberries, bananas. With a little bit of seeds and nuts not a lot measure them i measure my seeds and my nuts because i want them and in order for to have them i have to have them accounted for and a point's worth honestly goes a long way for a lot of them two list your top three to, to five and explore why they made the cut go beyond taste consider how they make you feel convenience factor points value and prices of everything oh my top three oh my god since i started weight watchers um has to be baby bell cheese no laughing cow cheese and baby bell cheese but laughing cow cheese and i said that in a video i did my top foods and i will link that if i remember in the cards and remember after the video is ended there's always videos that i pick special for you at the end of the video definitely and i did a whole video on that um laughing cow cheese i'm not a huge cheese lover i like cheese i don't want to pay the points for cheese for me it doesn't add that much but if I can get a one point baby bell or laughing cow and, and use that, well, now that they're two points, but I keep calling them baby bells, they're laughing cows. If I can get a one point laughing cow and be the base of my flatbread, my wraps. And I've learned vegetables in a different preparation. I think that's important, like baby carrots. I don't like them. I don't. But, but. If you get that carrot and get it in a carrot chip and you go in your store, they, they're just like, they're um, rippled chips, ridge chips, you want to call them. Why do I love them? Give me a baby carrot. I'm not going to eat it, but give me a carrot chip. Oh my God. And shredded carrots. I buy each bag. It's a convenience. Remember, if a convenience item helps you eat more of it, then buy it. Yes, it's a little bit more money, but if it's going to cause you to eat more vegetables, buy it buy your stuff they have you go to the store they have things chopped and ready to go if that's going to help you eat them then buy them eventually you may get into prepping them yourself but if you're just like i just don't feel like chopping them d i just don't feel like doing it buy it done for you there's no harm in that there's no shame in that not everybody wants to spend 20 hours in the kitchen a week you just want to spend the minimal time so getting things like that they have spiralized zucchini in the store now they have i saw a little um in my store the other day, stir fry mix is all ready to go. They had onions, peppers, mushrooms, uh, sugar snap peas, and so already you just had to just dump it in there. Like convenience. That's what we live in a world of convenience. So definitely check that out. So like yeah, my go to my top so I well, always, I like, honestly, getting packs of breasts and just roasting them myself. And I did that for my recipe the other day. Um, you could buy a chicken. I just said the price of rotisserie chicken these days have been ridiculous. But if, you know what, if you don't feel like roasting chicken, then buy a rotisserie chicken. It's done for you. And don't be afraid of that dark meat. Honestly, it's chicken. Like, I always think we get so hard on ourselves, like, oh, I hate dark meat and chicken. 
okay, you ate dark meat chicken. There's no harm in that. And for me, it's definitely portioned controlled chips. I like having a chip with lunch. Is there anything wrong with it? No, I'm not on a diet where I don't get to have that. I get to have it in a controlled way. I have to portion myself. And that's why I like getting the little Chalk Zero individually wrapped chocolates. They're wrapped individually. Very rare do I open two. I like having a piece of chocolate once in a while, not feeling bad about it. And those are right there for me to grab. I have the ones from Valentine's Day still in my bin. Just because I don't sit there and scarf them all down. Maybe once in a while I'll have a couple. But for the most part, it's being able to have this stuff by saying nothing is off limits. You have to find your favorite foods that you can't live without and put them in an affordable way. To me, it's the zero sugar chocolates. I mean, if that's not something you want to eat, then don't eat it. You find what's right for you. So like, yeah, chicken, yogurt, um, laughing cow cheese are like huge for me. Um, carrot chips, shredded, I mean, I just throw them in and if they're ready, gonna, I put them in there. If I didn't have them ready, would I use, would I sit there and grate a carrot? Probably not. I'll be honest with you. I, I like to, and I'm in the kitchen a lot. Yeah. Do I feel like grating a carrot? I don't. But if it's already grated for me, you better believe I'm putting it in things. It just, and I like nut milk. I found I love nut milks. I love the cashew, the almonds. I like the way they taste. Uh, yes, they're lower in points than traditional milk. I do still have traditional milk occasionally, but I do love the nut milk. I love it with, you know, with just, it's just good with my oatmeal. I love how it just pairs so well with and oats. Oh my gosh, since I've been on weight loss journey, I think I've rediscovered my love of oatmeal. Cold oatmeal, hot meal, oatmeal, oatmeal loaves. And there's the thing. Find an ingredient and how you can prepare it a million different ways. There's oat bakes. There's oats, oatmeal hot, oatmeal cold, oatmeal banana bread. There you can grind up into flour. I know Weight Watcher says we have to count it. Well, we have to count it anyway because it's oats. So what's the difference whether you have it as an oat or a flour, right? At this point, you're counting it. It's just delicious. And it's good to add to things. Instead of using flour, try using oats. It's a better carbohydrate. It is it doesn't raise your blood sugar, so it's one of those good carbs. I mean, I know there's some carbs that are better than others, and oatmeal is one of them. So since being on WW, I eat oatmeal several days a week. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's such a good food to have. It's nutrient dense. It's good for you. It's good for your body. It's a good thing. You know, I think when we start giving food negative connotations, that's when bad things happen. We start th blaming food. Oh, blaming, it's food's fault that I've gained weight. It's the type of foods that made, that made me gain weight. No, it's not. Light bulb, it's the amount of food that you eat. Even the amount of good food you eat is not always good. You could have all these, oh, I eat all whole foods. Well, you can't eat a lot of them. You have to be moderation for everything. So you just have to keep that in mind. It's moderation. It's hard when you're used to eating as much as you want. I know, it just truly is. Reflect on how you work them into your routine and meal. I think I already said that. <laughs> Decide on a new or exciting way to keep enjoying these foods. Jeez, I like could have wrote this topic. I just said, I didn't read it ahead. <sighs> Name a day. I like this part. Name a day each week. Eat one turkey burger Tuesday. <laughs> Honestly, could I put that out there? I know you love your ground turkey and it's love. And points and some of the you know you can get a zero point ground turkey but don't give up beef burgers an occasional beef burger is not a bad thing and um, when you sit there and again think if i eat a beef, beef burger i'm going to gain weight don't give beef beef gets a bad rap beef is very good and nutrient dense for you you should never give it up completely should you like reduce the amount you have sure i'm not telling you to have it every day but i think a burger a beef burger occasionally is never going to hurt anybody, especially on a holiday. I see people, we talk about holiday planning and going to barbecues, and there's always somebody in the conversation that says, well, I'm going to bring my own turkey burgers to the thing. It's Memorial Day. I know, I know you want to eat a lot. I do. But I think you could splurge on a burger. Yes, you don't know what type of meat they use before you tell me that. Um, I always forgo the cheese. If you want to give up something, in my opinion, I forgo the cheese. I'd rather have pickles, onions, mustard, ketchup. That's my burger of choice. And I honestly, if you're afraid, then maybe have it in a burger salad. Oh, 
I love burger salad. Or have it in a lettuce wrap. Or have it in a lower point bun. I'd rather see you bring your own buns than bring your own burger. I feel like when we go there with turkey burgers, we're saying to them, I can't eat that because I'm on a diet. And I don't want you to think that way. I want you to be empowered and go there, you know, work around your morning, eat lower point foods to go into that barbecue with points and weeklies and enjoy a beef burger. I, I don't think having a beef burger on Memorial Day is such a crime. I think it's a crime when you feel you can't have it. And I feel if you live like that, I can't have that. I won't eat that. That's not a light way of living. That is living on a diet mentality. I won't eat that. I don't eat like that. Who's to say how you're going to eat? You try to eat better. We all try to eat better. Better. We don't try to eat perfect. We just try to eat better. And better doesn't mean you're good 150,000% of the time. You're good 80% and that's what you shoot for. Let's dive a little deeper. I'm okay if you don't give your favorite healthy foods much thought beyond mmm. But it's worth taking the time to fully recognize the soul the role you go to breakfast burrito or your yoga parfait plays in your journey and understand why it works for you. Doing so upgrades it from a burrito to a valuable success driving tool. This is a major, let us explain. You have to love it. I don't want to hear that it's low in point. It's okay. It's the stinking cauliflower rice. You're not going to sit here and tell me that you prefer cauliflower rice over rice. I'm not believing that. I believe, yes, it, you think it's decent, but do you, if you, if you were the thinnest you could be and you had both rices there, what would you choose? You probably choose a regular rice. So my, my, I think compromise is mix it. Don't give up your regular rice. Just have less and mix the cauliflower since it's zero anyway, and then mix it into your regular rice. So it makes it a nice big plate of food, but you're having less rice and you're still having the cauliflower rice. You're still saving points. You are, but you're eating regular normal food that you're going to want to eat again i'm just, as these glasses are black i'm going to he sit here and tell you what you eat to lose weight you're going to have to eat to maintain so if you're going to sit here and eat cauliflower rice the rest of your life let me know i doubt that but don't undercut yourself to lose weight and then expect when you're done at you're at the weight you want to be that you're going to eat this other way again it doesn't work that way i wish it did i wish we could you know just lose the weight on one way and then live another way what is my favorite mantra? Lose it like you're going to live it. That's the only way it's sustainable. And I don't want to see you spinning your wheels, you know, years down the line, still trying to lose that four pounds because you're not at your happy spot, because you're not happy with the way you look. Remember, it's not the way you look, it's the way you are. And I feel like a lot of us see us, see ourselves as that chubby girl. We don't see ourselves the way we truly are because we still have those eyes of, I look, I look big. I, you know, most people will say, I feel big. I feel puppy, puffy. I feel fat. I feel not. I am. I feel, which means you feel it. So it's mostly up here. So when I have people say to me, oh yeah, I feel fat today. I feel puffy. I feel, I feel bloated. You feel, not you are, you feel. That's a key word when people say it, and I pick right up on that, and I just go right for it. You feel, you feel it because it's here. You know, we feel, we're never going to be, you know, we need to make our relationship with food better, our relationship with our journey better, not just be on this diet because you're never going to heal. We need to heal from the chubby girl we were. We need to heal her. We need to love her. We need to appreciate her. And we can't throw to the curb because that will be feeling that the rest of our lives. We need to embrace her and welcome her in because she's part of us. She's who we are. You know, she's not the complete person, but she's a part of us. First, the awareness shakes up and the otherwise ho-hum or autopiling eating routine. Plus, connecting food choices to your progress helps you stick with healthy favorites. It also increases the confidence to make a more positive change and the more try more new foods bonus information gleamed up from the deep dive gives you the clues on what else you might like all this can keep you excited about making healthy choices i want you to be excited about your food you see i what you see is what you get i am excited i am excited to deep dive into that food because it's everything i make food that i like not food that's light in points i gotta like it i don't care if it's zero points if i don't like it i'm not eating it it's just that's just that's the bottom line one of the best things about Weight Watchers is that you can continue eating your favorite foods and still lose weight. But all the 
low point zero point favorites you picked as you learn to work the program also pretty great dig into them and see how just just dig into them to see just how much harder they can work for you it's always you know sometimes you could base your you know eating around a zero point food you know three fast facts we'll end with that taste preference satisfaction convenience and points values could all influence food choices convenience uh, a girl does know what she's talking about. If things have to be ready, they just do. And it depends. You're, we're all in different parts of our life. You know, there's people that want to be in the kitchen. They want to be doing all this prep. And there's some of us that just don't. They're like, no, I've done, been there, done that. A lot of my followers are over 50. They've been, you know, my, they've been the, the, the housewife. They've been the cook, the cleaner. Right now they're in the, you know, they're in the retirement part of their life. And they just want to sit back. And I, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's, you've earned it, my lovelies. You've earned it. So take those conveniences where you can. And the stores have them. Yes, they're a little bit pricier, but you know what? Sometimes it's worth it. It is. Leaning on a variety of foods you can enjoy helps maintain healthy eating patterns long term. Long term. We have to sit and think about your eating patterns now are not going to change long term. So you have to start incorporating good eating patterns to stay on plan. We don't want to be spinning our wheels to be like, oh, here I am. I have to lose this five pounds again. Why? Because I, I, you know, I started eating lunch again. I stopped eating lunch because I, I thought I wasn't hungry. Sometimes we think we're not, but it, it's always good to keep up your, um, I'll get to that word again. Exploring how you feel, exploring how you, how exploring how you make healthier food works where you can change can help you stick oh my god can i read this one more time three exploring how you make healthier foods work for you can help you stick with them and add and make additional changes so yes we want to keep up our metabolism that was what i was looking for when you eat smaller meals your metabolism it's it can handle smaller things at once. You could burn food much better when you're giving your body less at a time. If you're giving yourself two big meals, it's not always the best idea. That's why, and I say this a million times, the diabetic, you know, community, I used to work for a doctor and that was a big thing with them was six small meals because it's easier to digest them. It won't spike your blood sugar. And that's all about some people are very sensitive to their blood sugar spiking. So it's just better to eat smaller meals if you can fit them in, like not having like a huge breakfast, have a nice breakfast and then you can have a little bit of a snack. I feel like people don't snack because they're afraid to snack. Snack on zero point foods. You know, you're not gonna gain weight eating vegetables and fruit. Well, if you're diabetic, you may, because <laughs> it's a carb, oh yeah. But like even like a half a banana with a little bit of peanut butter, it's a great snack. Or make a yogurt dip and dip some strawberries or blueberries in there. You can make snacks low in point. You can make snacks pretty much zero points if you sit there and give it some thought. But that is it for me. So I can go on about this. I can go on about this kind of stuff because it's all about getting excited about eating good food. Eating excited about eating your go-to foods. And these foods are going to continue to be your go-to for the rest of your life. We are not on a diet. This is not a temporary fix. We are looking for long-term weight loss success. We're looking to keep our weight off for the rest of our lives. And it's just, it's eating less. It's portion control. You know what I'm saying? It, it, those are huge in the way, you know, it just, because let's face it, none of us had, I never ate portion control. I ate what I wanted, you know, it's, and the types of foods that I eat are very different now. You know, when I go into a restaurant, I don't go for the country fried chicken steak. I mean, you know, I go for a nice piece of fish. I may, I mean, you know, I even might, might go for maybe a, like a marsala or a chicken piccata with a little bit of a sauce, but the chicken's not fried. It's not deep fried. So yes, you're going to pay points for sauce. And I get asked all the time, we'll do this real quick. How do you point the meal like that, D? It's not in the app. What I do is I look at the ingredients that, you know, Google chicken piccata. And you see what it's made with, you know, if it's wine or it's butter, you gotta, you know, you just sit there, you give, you know, a point for this, a, two points for that. You figure out what, what they probably used in yours. Like, you know, you don't got to point the whole recipe because you're not eating the whole recipe, you're eating a portion. And remember, look what's left on your plate. So yeah, give it something. And, and oh, I said deconstruct it by, by ingredients. And that's what I do sometimes. Something weird that I, that it's not going to be in the app. I just take it by ingredient and I just, you know, point it that way. 
and I was successful with it. I hit gold, so it's like it is a proven technique. It is definitely something we have to think about, and you know, we're gonna think about it the rest of our lives. It's it's our life, you know. Would we want to be heavy, or we want to have to track our food and figure out? That's that's the choices. The people, oh, I don't want to track. I don't want to track. I don't want to track. I don't want to track the rest of my life. Okay. Do you want to gain all your weight back? I bet that's a hard no. So yeah, so taking a few minutes to track your food is huge. And if you're going to get something weird like that, look it up before you go. You know, like I always check the menus out. And if I want something that I can't find in the app, I'm still at home. I get my pen and paper and I just that, 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 that. I figure it out. But that is it. It has been a half an hour. I talked way too long. <sighs> But thank you for sticking. If you stuck to the end, let me know. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Dish with D. I have a favor. I have a favor. If you stuck to this part, see if you can help a girl out. I am looking for people to share my content and see if we can grow this channel a little bit more. So if you take that share button, that link, you could post it in another group. People that you know, I would appreciate it. I do share all over the place, but it always helps to have my army behind me i would appreciate if that and have a and invite people to the group invite them to the facebook group there everybody's welcome so that is it for me i'm going to go up and make asparagus and eggs this morning got some fresh asparagus so local if you didn't see my rambling yesterday i got some fresh jersey asparagus from asparagus and duck eggs this morning so i'm gonna get the taste of duck eggs so <laughs> That'll be interesting. Oh, thank you for watching. I will dish with you tomorrow for a little mini meal prep. And thanks for watching. It is does not go unnoticed. It is definitely appreciated.